Okay, this video should have been made last year when it happened, but I was thinking, you know, it's such an obvious sign from God, someone's gonna make the video. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people making the video. So I waited, and waited, and waited, and nothing! So now I'm thinking, hey, maybe God wants me to make the video. And I started this YouTube channel. Alright, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Okay, let's talk about Malaysia Flight. MH370 and MH17. MH370 disappeared on March 8th. 2014 last year and MH17 got shot down on July 17 last year. A sign of the rapture and the great tribulation. Now before we start we have to know a little bit about biblical numerology. Malaysia flight MH370 disappeared on March 8, 38. 3 is a number for God, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The 3 are 1. 3 is also a number for completion. Because God is three and the three are complete, right? Eight is the number for a new beginning. So we have God plus a new beginning equals the rapture. Or completion plus a new beginning equals the rapture. So completion. Completion of the church plus a new beginning equals the rapture. Now MH370, the 70 is related to time and judgment. So Israel spent 70 years in Babylon. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. So God had Israel spend 70 years in Babylon. That, that was the fullness of the time for their judgment. Moses appointed 70 elders to judge Israel. There are 70 weeks in Daniel. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. The 70 weeks can also be uh, more accurately 77s, right? The weeks is uh, literally 7s. So the fullness of time determined for Israel is 77s. So we have God plus 70 fullness of time. The fullness of time for the church when it's complete equals the rapture. Or we have God plus judgment. Time to judge the earth, we have uh, equals the rapture. So MH370 disappeared on March 8th. Kind of a coincidence, yes? Now MH17 was shot down on July 17th. Now 7 is a number for perfection. 17 is a lesser known number. It's uh, related to perfection, victory, and the restoration of all things. Okay, how so? The first mention of the number 17. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. So God had victory over sinful man on the 17th. God judged the earth on the 17th day of the second month. Now the second time it occurs is also a Noah story. Then the ark rested in the seventh month, the seventeenth day of the month, on the mountains of Ararat. So on the seventeenth day of the seventh month, God restored the earth and the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. So the earth was restored on the seventeenth, pretty much, right? And the ark rested. Everything was complete. So that's why seventeen is related to restoration of all things, victory, perfection. Now we also know that Jesus rose from the dead on the 17th day. Well, how do we know that? No, we know Jesus was crucified on Passover. We know when's Passover. Passover is on the 14th day of the first month on the Jewish calendar. Jesus rose from the dead three days later, right? He was in the grave three days and three nights. So if he was crucified on Passover the 14th, then he rose three days later, well, that's, right, seven, the 17th day. Yes. 14 plus 3, right? What the heck? So Jesus had victory over death on the 17th. God specifically chose for Jesus to die on the 14th so he could rise from the dead on the 17th. Jesus was not going to rise on the 13th, okay, or the 6th, right? 6th the number for man, 13th the number for rebellion, right? God specifically chose these days, or these dates. God is very into numbers if you uh, read your Bible carefully. Nothing is random. So God will have victory over unrepentant sinners when he pours out his wrath and judgment. So unfortunately for MH17, they symbolize the Great Tribulation, which got shut down on the 17th day. I, I hate to have been on that flight. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting, guys. Follow this, okay? 
Guess what was the Earth's population in 2014? The estimate for the world population according to the CIA World Factbook, it was 7.17 billion. About, right? I mean, it's like 7.174611, something, right? We don't know the exact number, it's just an estimate. We can't have the exact number of people on Earth because there's people being born all the time. But the estimate was 7.17 billion. And this was this estimate was in July 2014. So back in March, when uh, Malaysia Flight MH370 uh, disappeared, it was probably about 7.17 billion. Where have we seen that number before? 717? Coincidence? Okay, we need to talk about an event in the book of Revelation before we get into some numbers. The three horsemen in Revelation. Now, I didn't say four horsemen, the three horsemen. There are four horsemen, but the rider on the white horse is clearly different from the three that follow him. Follow my teaching on the rider on the white horse. He's totally set apart. The three that follow after him, they have power to kill a fourth of the earth. I know most pastors and Bible teachers, they teach, Oh, the rider on the white horse, he's, uh, he's the Antichrist uh, because the, the horse is white. White symbolizes lies and deception and he's an imposter because the horse is like white. When does white ever symbolize lies and deception in the Bible? What Bible are they reading? Okay, the revelation of Jesus Christ is how Jesus sees these things. Right? Jesus sees Antichrist as it's a beast! And the false prophet, he spoke like a dragon! You can't miss the Bible imagery. It's just so clear. So here comes a guy on a white horse, and suddenly, he's Antichrist. How does he become Antichrist? Because he comes on a white horse. I mean, why would you do that? You would only do that if you have already preconceived something in your head, such as the first seal begins the great tribulation. So whoever appears will make him antichrist. I mean, that's not how you interpret the Bible. No, but follow my teaching on the rider on the white horse. Uh, I'll make a video. I didn't make it yet. I'll get there. But follow the teaching. So the three horsemen that follow the white horse rider, they have power to kill a fourth of the earth. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. It's so clear right here. To kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Now we know the sixth seal is when the great tribulation is about to begin. That's the sign that God gives in the heavens that the great tribulation is about to begin. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, right? And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And that's the sign that the great tribulation is about to begin. And there's all these other signs, right? That it just goes on. And it says, And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, and it's basically the people on the earth. Right, what do they say? They said, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who is able to stand? When he opens the sixth seal, the people on the earth say, hey, the great day of his wrath has come. That's the day when the great tribulation begins. When he opens the sixth seal, not when he opens the first seal. The three horsemen have power to kill a fourth of the Earth's population. So let's take 7.17 billion people, Earth's population, and we divide that by four. And what do we get? We get 1.7925. So we want to work uh, with more round numbers. We can round it down to 1.79 or round up to 1.8. And we're going to go ahead and round up because uh, we don't want people to disappear. And the Earth's population is always increasing, so it makes more sense to just round up. So 7.17 billion people minus 1.8 billion, right? A fourth killed by the three horsemen. We have a uh, 2.39 billion representing the rapture on MH370 because there was 239 people on that flight. And what does that give us? 2.98 billion people. So 2.98 billion people representing those who go into the Great Tribulation. How many people were on Malaysia flight MH17? 298 people. Those on board MH17 was 298, not 291, not 253, not 194, but just perfect 298. 
And on MH370, those that disappear was perfect to 39. Now the critics are going to say, well, there's uh, 239 people on board. There wasn't uh, 2.39 people on board. How do you get 0.39 of a person? But the numbers 239 and 298, I mean, it just works out perfectly. Kind of strange. So what happens if we take a 1.79, which doesn't seem to make sense because uh, Earth's population was growing. 7.17 billion people, 1.79 billion people are killed. We have 2.39 people raptured, or uh, I'm sorry, 2.39 billion people raptured. Then we have 2.98 billion people who go into the Great Tribulation, and that leaves us with 0 0.01 billion, or 10 million people. Perhaps 10 million people who survived the Great Tribulation, if God wanted us to round down. But I don't think God wants us to round down, but I think God just wants uh, to give us a picture of what's going to happen, the rapture, and then the Great Tribulation. Now let's talk about a story in 2 Kings chapter 1. It's the story of Elijah on a hill. Now King Ahaziah went to arrest Elijah, and he sent a captain and his fifty. And they went to arrest Elijah. We all know the story. Elijah said, If I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and burn you and your fifty men. And of course, he was a man of God. And fire came down, <laughs> toasted them, right? Boom, they're gone. So what does the king do? The king sends another captain and his 50 men. And the same thing happens, right? He says, come down, Elijah. And uh, Elijah says, uh, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down and burn you and your 50 men. And of course, he was still a man of God. And so fire came down and, <laughs> right, burned those guys up. Then the third captain came and he pleaded with Elijah. Right, pleaded for his life and the life of his men. And they were spared or saved, right, saved from destruction. So, in that story, we know two-thirds were burned and one-third were saved, or one-third were spared, however you want to look at it. Take a look here at 7.17 billion. We divide that by 3 equals 2.39. Isn't that interesting? What a coincidence. Is this a sign from God? You think? Now back to Elijah's story. How many men were in Elijah's story? There was one captain and his 50, and another captain and his 50, and of course a third captain and his 50, and that brings us to 153 men. Okay, Bible students, where have we seen that number before? It was breakfast by the sea, when Jesus rose from the dead. After Jesus rose from the dead, Peter, John, and uh, some others, they went fishing. Jesus says, hey, have you any fish? They said, no. Jesus said, cast your net on the right side and you'll find some. So they cast their net on the right side. And John said, it's the Lord. And Peter, hearing it's the Lord, he puts on his outer garment and he plunges into the sea. Uh, because the water is probably cold that morning, so he put on the coat first. I, I don't know. And when they arrived on land, they counted the fish. Everyone was with Jesus. And there was that one apostle on the side. One fish, two fish, three fish. So today we know there's 153. No, actually it was recorded for us for a reason. Not because there was one disciple on the side going of one fish. No, God gave us, God wrote it down for a reason. 153 fish. Why? 153 represents uh, the fullness. So when they caught the fish, it was the fullness of the catch. God is going to get all the believers. So 153 simply represents fullness. So that's why they caught 153 fish. No one who will believe on the Lord is going to be lost. There's not going to be some guy out there somewhere, Oh, if, the, if he only heard the gospel, he would have accepted Jesus. No, it's not going to happen. God's going to get them all. So we go back to Elijah's story. 153 in Elijah's story, what does that mean? I think 153 in Elijah's story represents the fullness of the people on earth. Two-thirds are burned, one-third are saved. Now here's another interesting fact. There was 153 Chinese on that flight, on Malaysia flight MH370, the one that disappeared. More specifically, there was 152 from mainland China and one from Hong Kong. But Hong Kong is part of China. I mean, whether you like it or not, I'm sorry, it's, it, it's just it, right? Could it be that God is telling us something, perhaps a work that he is going to do in the future of bringing a fullness, a full harvest among the Chinese? I don't know. These numbers, all the, these numbers just keep matching up. It's strange. 
perhaps it may be not today and maybe not tomorrow but maybe in 10 years I don't know God's going to open the door and he's going to do his work whether you like it or not did God give us a sign in the Old Testament perhaps of a prophet who represents Jesus going into a completely pagan city preaching repentance and the people get saved did God give us some story like that? Yeah, Jonah. Jonah goes into Nineveh and he preaches repentance. And the pagan people who are completely godless, they repent. So that Jesus says in Matthew 12, the men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Now here's some interesting facts. Those who are professing to be Christians, the worldwide Christian population, is 33.39, basically a third, according to the CIA World Factbook. It's basically a third of the world population. And if you look at Wikipedia, and they basically just got this off the CIA you know, World Factbook, as of early 21st century, Christianity, ha Christianity has approximately 2.4 billion adherents, out of about 7.2 billion people. Now, uh, back in 2014 March, this uh, 7.2 billion people was 7.17 uh, billion people, and the number of believers were at was at 2.39 billion. It was basically a third of the year's population. And here's the interesting thing to think about. We know only half the church goes in the rapture. Well, how do we know that? Because of the parable of the wedding feast, or I'm sorry, the parable of the ten uh, virgins who are waiting, right? Five wise, five foolish. The five wise go into the wedding feast. The five foolish get left behind. Now all ten are waiting for, right, the bridegroom, but only five get to go in because five are ready. But the sign God gave us is there was two, three, nine, two point four, two point three nine billion people, right, that disappear, go in the rapture. But the current Christian population only stands at a third. Could it be that the rider on the white horse that goes forth conquering and to conquer, that he will conquer up to a third of the earth for Jesus and bring the Christian population up to two thirds so that when the rapture comes, about a third of the earth's population go in the rapture. That's something to think about. This is George Chuang teaching from China. And until the Lord comes, love the Lord with all your heart. Love you, Jesus. Wait, one more thing. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. This is my first video and you really help get me going by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And if you happen to see one subscriber on the bottom as you watch this video, yeah, just know it's uh, me subscribing to myself. Also like the Facebook page and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.